Hello and welcome to today's class for Information System Audit BIT 4108. I'm your lecturer, Elena Moy, from the School of Computing and Informatics. So today we are, we are going to have introduction to Information System Audit so that we have a basic understanding on the concepts of Information System Audit. So we'll go directly to defining some of those terms uh, that are used in information system audit. But for us to understand information system audit, we go first and understand what is audit or what is an audit. Where we usually say in uh, uh, the field of audit, an audit is a systematic objective examination of one or more of the aspects of an organization uh, that compares what the organization does uh, uh, to a defined set of critical requirements. That is comparing what the organization does, the operations, the business operations, co as compared to the defined set of required, as compared to what they are supposed to do. So we know that organizations do uh, the normal audit when you go to the area of, of business and there is what we call auditing process. Now, when it comes to information system audit, of course, now this is where we come to the IT systems. This is where we come to technology. So information system is a systematic and independent, systematic and independent examination of information systems environment to ascertain that computer safeguards or computer system safeguards assets, maintain data integrity, allow organization goals to be achieved effectively and uses resources effectively. So just like the normal audit, then information system then is now that audit, examination, checking of the information systems in place. In your previous unit, you have learned introduction to information system. We know what is an information system. An organization uses information system for their business operations. There are so many types of information system. We'll be reviewing some of that, which basically is a computer, computerized system or IT system that organization use for their day-to-day -day operations, recording, um, producing reports, automating so many of them. So now this independent examination means independent, mostly conducted by another person, of course not the person doing uh, uh, that work to ascertain that those computer systems, those systems that are in use in the organization, to ascertain that as they are operating, as users are using those uh, systems, are those systems safeguarding assets? Are they maintaining data integrity? Do we have the system where the data is being corrupted? Uh, is the information flow as it should be? Is the right information being delivered, being processed? So data integrity, of course, is a major part because it ensures that the organization operations are done as per what is required and allows organization to be our organization goals. Of course, every system that an organization used, you learned that in previous unit because this unit, there are those prerequisite units that you have done that is system analysis and design, you have done management information system, and in all those you have come across those concepts. We say that information systems should be in line, or information systems should work to achieve, to ensure that the organization achieve its goals. The objectives of information system should be in line with the organization strategies. You learn that in, uh, in, in management information systems. So here, the IS audit should allow organization goals to be achieved or to check whether the, the systems are they are allowing the goals to be achieved. Are they in line with the goals? Is there some conflict? If there is a conflict of this information as far as what is the goal of organization system, of course that means that the, the information system is not appropriate and also in terms of use, using of resources eff efficiently. Are IT systems in use, are they ensure that there is optimum use of resources um, 
are within the organization. And basically now we can say that now IS audit is an examination information system. This one we are dealing it in detail. So in a nutshell, IS audit, information system audit is an examination of the management controls within an IT infrastructure. We use the word the IT and IS inter we can use when you talk of information system of course you use the IT technology there is an infrastructure that supports the I information system uh, because the I IT infrastructure that's why we have the technologies in use but then we know that for an organization to use information system there are so many things at play uh, there so an IT audit can be defined as any audit that encompasses review and evaluation of automated information processing system related and un automated process and the interfaces among. So there, that is just for your deep understanding as far as information system is concerned. We look at the purposes of IS audit. What is the purpose of conducting information system? We know that in the current business world, as I keep saying, currently in the situation that we are in, in COVID-19, information system technology is actually supporting the world. Uh, things are being done by system. It's online, but remember, for you to be able to access that service, for you to be able to do whatever you're doing online, there is a system in place. Those are information system. For an organization to carry its business operations, there are information system. There are so many um, systems in place in organization. Here in MKU, we have information systems coming from the university management system that is in use that uh, manages the business operation of the university, that manages the student life where you're able to log in into the portal, access your details, register for unit, register for exam, and so many things. So we say that that information system is that now, now whatever supports the organization. So information system are the livelihood of any medium and large business organization. In the current business world, every medium and every large organization needs to use information system, we say, to gain a competitive advantage. And we also say information systems are actually a tool for survival. Any organization that will not embrace information system will be kicked out of business. That one is not an option because the world is going this way and therefore everybody has to move that direction. So information systems are the livelihood. They are what the organization depends, current, middle and large business operation. I mean large business organization. And of course, they are used for storage, processing, so many things. So computers do not merely record business transactions. It's not just about a user sitting, uh, recording, registering students as they join in. It's not just about a teller making tr records of banks' withdrawals, bank de deposit, but actually drive the key business processes on the enterprise. When you talk of all the business operations, we define them, financial uh, business operations, marketing business operations, we can have production business operations, human resource business operations. When it comes to what you call enterprise resource planning systems or enterprise systems, you know they support a number of those business operations. Every, actually, every business operations you know can be supported by that. So the purpose of IS audit is to review and provide feedback, assurances, and suggestions. Review. Those operations, business operations that are being supported, finance, production, marketing, human resource, there are so many functions. They review, are the information system in place? Are they ensuring that the business operations are conducted effectively? Is the customers being served? Is the right information being gotten? Or is there some hitch? Is there corruption of data? Is there what you call, sometimes night we call it uh, maybe denial of service, is there an availability of system? How effective is that system? Do we have the system um, having downtime such that most of the time the users are using the system, the system has errors, is down and all that. So IS audit now will involve checking that. So these concerns can be grouped under three broad categories. The concerns or the purpose of IAT, IS audit. Uh, whatever you do as far as IS audit is concerned, uh, those activities or the concerns are basically based on 
three main areas. The, the first one is availability. And this availability, I know, is not a new term to you. So that will the information system on which the business is heavily dependent on be available for business uh, at all times when required? Are the systems well protected against all types of losses and disasters? So this availability is important because if an information system is in place for an organization and every time the user goes to use it, whether user, staff, client, if the system is not available, it's down, and all those errors we get as users, then that means that system is not available, then it's not serving the purpose. Is it available when the user take it? Of course, to do with technology, we don't expect 100%. We don't expect perfection. But there are things in place such that if this system is down because of a number of things, the IT personnel, they are able to come, give a solution, provide. We have even in terms of servers, systems, and all that, redundant. Do you have fault tolerant system so that in case this one goes down, is there another one that takes up the work? Or will you uh, have a, a, system, a case where the organization cannot work for a whole day, for two days, for a week. That in itself, it means that the system is not working as it should be. Uh, of course, there are so many factors. Confidentiality with the information system or with the information that is in those information systems be disclosed only to those who have need to see and use it and not to anyone else. How are those information systems, as you are doing auditing, information system auditing, you are checking, are those information systems doing uh, what they ought to do in terms of confidentiality? Is only those people who are allowed to access. Of course, when it comes to accessing database administrators, we have what you call user rights, so that this user is only supposed to view this uh, and uh, information or data that concerns them is allowed to do modification or just viewing there are those rights editing features and all that uh, and of course there are other issues of security if the information system is vulnerable such that those who are not allowed to view it and can view it even issues of hacking and all that that means that there are those minimum standards that should be observed integrity will the information provided by the system always be accurate the information that you get from the system we talk of computer system information systems they take input process produce output uh, at the end of the day we expect that as that process goes on you get the right information are you getting if there is an interference somewhere such that you input data process it the operations are not as they should be or there is an interference or for whatever purpose the information system is having some problems and then at the end the information you get at the end is not the correct data is not accurate is not reliable then that means the information system is not serving uh, the purpose what ensures that no unauthorized modification can be made by the data or can be made to the data or the software in the system how do we ensure that as this processing is happening into input processing output how do you ensure that nobody gets access to that? Currently, we are having information systems that are web-based. Uh, information, people are working on the cloud. Um, users are, yes, seated on the computer, but whatever they are doing, these things are within the organization network. The computers are networked. There is a local area network or uh, the one that the organization may be using. Um, you have even uh, maybe system on uh, VPN, virtual private networks, the information is out there. So you have to audit how uh, is the organization or how is that information system ensuring that nobody gets access even to that data that is for the organization that is being operated, it's on the network. Remember if you go to computer security, there are issues of security, for example, uh, people tapping into the network use of use of um, sniffers and so many other ways so if the right thing is not is not done then we can have people who are not authorized or hackers being able to uh, 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 access that information and in some cases even modify if that is happening then when you're auditing we say that is a, a big problem that of course now reviewing to ensure oh yes audit ensures that TV reviews to ensure that that sh should not happen or recommend for actions that should be uh, taken. We compare IS audits uh, versus financial 
audit, uh, which we say that IS audit tends to focus on determining risk that are inherent to information assets and in accessing controls in order to reduce or mitigate this uh, risk. So we are looking at risk. In IS audit, we mostly check on, check on the risk that are inherent in information system, while IT audit may take the form of general control, checking the generally control, I mean generally operations as far as or uh, the business operations is concerned. So regarding the protection of information assets, one purpose of IS audit is to review and evaluate an organization information system, availability, confidentiality, and integrity by answering uh, the questions which we have already talked about in the previous uh, part. Then we go and review some information system concept, defining what is a system. A system is basically just that set of ordinary segment or an, an ordinary arrangement of a set of interrelated components that are interdependent on each other that of course work together collectively to achieve a common purpose and basically computer-based information system is where now we have a collection of people, hardware, um, software, data procedures that are used to do business process and provide information to organization or to the people within the organization who need it. So information system can be classified on the basis of the following aspects. This one is just a review. You talked about this in previous unit. Uh, we can classify them based on element, interactive behavior, degree of human intervention, and human, I mean also the working uh, output. So in that category, we usually, in that case, we usually have classification from system. We have, based on elements, we have abstract or physical system. Abstract, those are based on ideas and all that. Those one, then we have physical. Interactive behavior, we have open and closed system. When open system, we say as those systems that accept input from the environment, closed do not accept input from environment. Degree of human intervention, we can have manual or automated when it comes to system. And this is where now we are. In working output, we have deterministic and probabilistic. Deterministic, where you can easily determine the outcome. And probability, the outcome probabilistic, uh, the outcome is based on, on probability. Uh, still review, you talked about in previous uh, units, you have the components of an information system that is hardware, software, procedure, data, and people. That one you have done it, you don't need to review, to go back to that. The information system environment, the information system environment, you have the system boundary, how far this information covers up to how much, the scope, the subsystem, the parts that make up uh, the system, and you have the supra system refers to the entity formed by a system and other equivalent system which it interacts with. Um, so we have the, uh, the IS goals or purpose. An information system is an ongoing process that uh, evaluates controls, suggests security measures for the purpose of safeguarding the assets, the organization assets, and also improving system effectiveness and system efficiency for the purpose of attaining organization um, goals, attaining the organization goals. So then those goals can be uh, put in terms of various category. The first one you've talked of, safeguarding IS asset. How is data safeguarded in those in so information system in terms of um, uh, objects in the, the, the whole data that the organization deals with? There is external, internal, structured, non structured, graphics, sound, documents. How do you safeguard all that data in the organization application system? The application system in the organization, how are they safeguarded? Uh, in the, as they are working within the organization. The technology in use covering hardware, software, the computers, the desktop, the, la the, the, the laptops, the operating system in use, how are they safeguarded? The facilities, resources of house, the resources to house and support information system. We have server rooms, we have uh, cabinets and all that. And also the people in terms of uh, the staff, the other uh, our goal is ensuring data integrity. We have talked so much about that. How do we ensure that there is no unauthorized de deletion of data, modification, alteration by people who are not supposed to? How do we ensure that? So um, 
auditing is about that effective and in that that ensures that the foreign attributes of data or information are maintained in terms of effectiveness we have talked about that efficiency confidentiality uh, availability uh, compliance uh, reliability of information accuracy of of information and the that part is on achieve organization goals effectively and consume resources efficiently. So the goal of IS is also uh, ensuring that guidelines are available to assist auditors in their jobs such that those from information system audit and control association. So in, the, in here we have the information system audit objectives as far as auditing is concerned. So ensuring adequacy and effectiveness of internal control, how do you ensure that the controls in place are put, ensuring that resources are allocated to, constitu to constitute of information system in an efficient and effective manner, and providing assurance that systems related assets are safeguarding. Uh, also, a number of things to be checked, also ensuring that information is accurate, available and reliable, provide a uh, reasonable assur assurance that all errors, omissions or irregularities are prevented. How is that done? and reviewing the system to ensure that compliance to the policies, the various policies in place, procedures, standards, and legal requirements are in place. We have standards, for example, to do with ISO. We have policies maybe to do with regulation in the field and so many things. Um, we have review application and operations uh, and operation systems to ensure that needs of the users are met, and also identifying and recognizing potential uh, threats that comprise, that is confidentiality, integrity, and availability, still going to the three major concerns. And lastly, ensuring that management takes appropriate, detective, corrective, and preventive action. How does the management ensure that there's things like intrusion, detection, and to deter, and also to correct in case things happen, and also to prevent in future? Of course, when it goes to audit, even the general audit, you know we talk of, how do you uh, maybe uh, be able to detect anomaly? And how do you correct that? And how do you prevent preventive action for future, uh, to avoid future occur uh, uh, occurrences? Next, we have categories and types of IS audit. We have three board categories of IS audit. So IS audit may be performed, uh, may be performed. In terms of general control review, this is where you govern you, you, the review of the controls which govern the development, which controls are in place that govern the development, operation, maintenance, and security of application system. You look at which controls have the organization put in place to ensure that maybe the right software is de developed, the right system are developed, the right system are in operation. Then application control review, this one is a specific one, which is uh, specific to application system. So examining the controls that are in put in place in terms of the application system in use where you have data being input, processing, and output. That application system, which controls are in place to ensure the goals uh, that everything happens uh, effectively. And the last one, you have system development review, a review of the development of new application uh, system. When you are developing information system, what um, um, should be done? So evaluation of that process to ensure that the right system is de developed to avoid this issue of where we have organizations spending millions of shillings on systems that later will not be in use. Um, then next is types of IS audit. There are a number of types of IS audit. You have system audit. Uh, this one is on the uh, audit of the controls design and implementation of the system. So this one does deals with design and implementation of the system application audit um, in terms of uh, the audit of information system applications uh, in place to ensure issues like confidentiality, uh, efficiency, availability, and all that. We have compliance audit that is provide management with tools for internal review of compliance in the operating units. So the, the uh, information system in use, are they ensuring uh, compliance? We have security audit. 
how is audit being done? I mean, how is security being implemented in the organization? So you have to audit uh, security to provide a comprehensive and cost-effective network, vulnerability assessment by disclosing a number of vulnerable tests. You check, even uh, seeing is the system vulnerable maybe to various security threats, hacking, and all that. We have performance audit. Uh, entails an objective and systematic examination of the evidence of independent assessment of performance. How is the system, information system in place, how are they performing? Are they performing as they are uh, required? Next, we have IS audit requirements, which are the requirements as far as IS audit, IS audit is concerned. So they are in many areas. So the first one is risk analysis. Audit uh, mainly is about checking the risk, as you have said. So the scope of an information system audit includes verifying of existing and performance of control. So the selection of the controls to, state, to test remains a critical decision for information uh, system. So in, as far as risk is concerned, we look at the risk factors, the, the, the inherent, the, the risk factors inherent is business operations. Uh, for example, as access risk, business disruption risk, credit risk, customer service risk, data integrity. So risk is a very important part as far as IS audit is concerned. Uh, looking at the likelihood of that risk, um, uh, the actions to take, and even after taking some actions, which risks still remain, and later we call off mitigation measures that you will put later to ensure that even if this risk, because a risk is a probability that something harmful or something will occur that will lead to harmful effect in the organization. So how do you ensure that uh, that is uh, checked? We have financial uh, and external um, report, misstatement risk, fraud risk, legal and regulatory risk, physical harm risk. So all those, you can, there are various categories of risk that need to be identified. The other requirement of IS audit is the IS threats, vulnerability, exposure, likelihood, and attack. That is understanding the threats that pose, that are maybe posed to the organ, to information system, the vulnerabilities, the exposure, and the likelihood. How likely to, is this um, threat likely to occur? and the attack form uh, the basis of information system audit and threat. Here, all these things we have covered in the unit, uh, computer security or in topic computer security, um, and where we have a threat is a potential event that could exploit the, the vulnerability of the system. There are various types or many examples of, of computer security threats like access, uh, phishing, uh, hacking, and all that. So. Uh, Checking in terms of that vulnerability, which we have talked about, the exposure, likelihood um, of the attacks, and also the attacks. The third requirement is on information system control objective. Information system have a value in the entity and are required to be suitably protected. Therefore, information system have uh, the following characteristics. We talked about that one, so that is a review. And number three, we have the information system objective, which we had covered in the previous uh, part. So this one becomes a, an IS audit requirement. Next, we have uh, uh, system effectiveness and efficiency. So during the course of information system audit, an auditor is often required to comment on the effectiveness and, efficient, uh, and uh, efficiency of the system. So in terms of knowing Ever, uh, determining whether the system is achieving its objective, that's about effectiveness. Um, uh, to, to ensure that whatever the objectives of the organizations are met. While efficiency, of course, is about usage of resources, it's about optimizing. So um, by checking where there is a minimum, uh, user, uh, is reflected by use of the minimum amount of resources to achieve objective, which we call optimal operations. The other requirement is on information system uh, abuse. Information system abuse may manifest it in various ways. These include destruction of assets, theft of assets, modification of assets, which, of course, these ones, we understand them from computer security. There can be hardware destruction. There can be theft of both hardware, software, data, modification by unauthorized access. Where now here you are talking about 
uh, data integrity or integrity of information, privacy violation in terms of people accessing or information being compromised so that we may have people who are not allowed to access, accessing that and violating on privacy. Disruption of operations. When we talk of an availability, there are so many ways when it comes to computer security. We have, for example, email bombing that uh, maybe uh, ruins or uh, makes the organization systems not to be available and unauthorized use of accesses, which may be in terms of internal staff or external people. Asset safeguarding objective and process, that's another requirement. Of course, um, the assets that safeguard, the, the safeguarding information asset is identification of the same. So ensuring that these assets are which are intangible in nature, how are they safeguarded? And in terms of that, we have in terms of the following areas, compiling a functional information technology assets, information technology or IT assets detailing, information including names of hardware, software, network platform, application with vendor details, inform, installation of location, earlier on installation, major upgrade history, and all that. So compiling that uh, information uh, as an audit requirement, asset safeguarding, assigning uh, probabilities, and um, evidence collection and evaluation. Lastly, we look at the system environment and information system. So computerization is a tool that gives organization the capability to provide better customer uh, service. That's about most of the major reason to conduct better housekeeping and so as to enable or optimal, I mean enable optimization of use of resources. These, these, all those areas we have mentioned it, it, uh, a lot. So to ensure that computerization takes care of existing and emerging needs of the organization, the following issues must be considered to ensure that organizations all to ensure that the organization is able to provide uh, better service to customers and ensure that things are done well we have the following issues to be considered standardization of hardware operating system using standard hardware operating system system software and application system use of software facilities or to facilitate interconnectivity of systems to have communication with uh, your staff, clients. The need of high level of security uh, not only calls for technical competence of the people involved, but also requires continuous testing of efficiency and searching of new emerging vulnerabilities as well. Uh, communication and networking involves the use of network facilities. Of course, now the, this is now to do with the IT infrastructure. As far as the various communication aspects are concerned, we have um, a technology infrastructure with periodic upgrades often leads to migration from one system to another. So the technology uh, uh, infrastructure that the organization is, of course, there is an issue of where organization keeps on upgrading according to the need. The need for business process reengineering is also a consequence of evolution of business complexity, which necessarily calls for a red and large role of information system. So business process engineering, uh, as we looked at, up at it, is also important. Seven issues of human relations in computerized environments are perhaps one of the greatest challenge for an information system audit. So we have unpredictable and uh, indispensable, as uh, that is unpredictable and dispensable. They are unpredictable and dispensable as they are. Human resources define the fine line differentiating the success or failure of an information technology. We have issues to do with sharing of technology and experiences. Information system uh, importance as far as in the in in the in the face of. Uh, increased use of credit and debit cards online. This issue of e-commerce, we are here where we are buying things online, we are doing things online, and there there is a use of credit and debit cards. So there are a number of issues there, and therefore we have e-commerce interface in the um, regular functioning of an entity. So uh, that looks a closer monitoring. You know there is a lot that happens. There is the credit card fraud, 
there is privacy issues, there is fishing, where we have people who are able to call, uh, they are able to get information from uh, people using, uh, maybe conducting e-transactions or e-commerce transaction online, and now that becomes uh, a threat. So for today, uh, we go up to there. We will meet in the next lesson. Thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.